the Prophet Musa. The River Nile Egypt, with its 3,000 years of history, is one of the oldest civilizations in the world and was founded on the banks of the Nile in the region then known as Lower Egypt. Based on a territory stretching from the Nile Delta towards the south, Egypt became one of the wealthiest and most powerful states of the time. The Egyptians achieved a very advanced knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, architecture, and art. With this knowledge they acquired, they built palaces and pyramids whose secrets have still not been unraveled to this day. The civilization of ancient Egypt took its glorious place on the stage of history for the period of time allotted to it, and then disappeared. Ancient Egypt, which seemed so civilized on the surface, was in fact an order built on the blood and tears of innocent people. Indeed, God describes ancient Egypt in the Quran as a clear example of a system of denial. In one verse of the Quran, one of the cruel rulers of Egypt, Pharaoh, declares his own divinity in his own words. My people, does the kingdom of Egypt not belong to me? Do not all these rivers flow under my control? Do you not then see? The people of Egypt worshipped idols they made with their own hands and hoped for blessings from these statues. One of the fundamental inconsistencies of this system of denial was the way that the kings regarded themselves as gods. The kings, who believed themselves to be divine, would marry their own sisters in order to prevent their blood mixing with those of ordinary people. They would have the divine decrees they issued in the light of their own earthly passions and desires imposed on those around them and eliminated anyone who opposed their rule. These kings were the pharaohs who ruled the Egyptian civilization for hundreds of years. So great was the power of the pharaohs over the people of Egypt that everyone submitted to them. These kings were the rulers, owners and administrators of the whole state, the territories of the country and the Nile. All forms of production in the country were kept under tight control and offered to the pharaoh. Pharaoh, in turn, made most unjust use of these in favor of the social class closest to him. Those not of the people of Egypt had no right to life or speech. As a result of the injustice which stemmed from the Pharaoh's power and capricious rule, the non-Egyptian slaves bore the brunt of the oppression. Monarchical rule and slavery have existed in all civilizations in history. But the slaves in Egypt suffered to an extent unknown in any other civilization. Every pharaoh in the history of ancient Egypt had temples and cities built to demonstrate his power and wealth. Thousands of slaves were ruthlessly worked to death in the construction of these cities. They had no right to rest. Slaves were never regarded as part of the Egyptian people. They were deprived of the right to life and free speech while the people of Egypt lived in plenty and abundance. This slave class were the children of Israel 
descended from the line of the prophet Ibrahim. According to the verses of the Quran, the Egyptians enslaved and oppressed the children of Israel to keep the system of slavery going. The oppression of the children of Israel had reached such levels that even their numbers were controlled. Women capable of serving were kept alive, and newly born male children ruthlessly slaughtered. God describes the situation in one verse addressed to the children of Israel. Remember when we rescued you from the people of Pharaoh. They were inflicting an evil punishment on you, slaughtering your sons and letting your woman live. In that there was a tremendous trial for you from your Lord. It was in such an environment that God sent a messenger who would do away with this oppression and cruelty, warn people to turn to the true path and free the children of Israel from slavery. That messenger was the prophet Musa. The prophet Musa was born to a family of the enslaved children of Israel. His mother feared that her son would be killed by Pharaoh's soldiers. That fear continued until she received a revelation from God. God revealed to the mother of the prophet Musa what she had to do. Before Pharaoh's men could kill the baby, the mother of the prophet Musa placed him in a chest and left him afloat on the water of the Nile. The current carried the prophet Musa to Pharaoh's palace. The family of Pharaoh picked him up so that he might be an enemy and a source of grief to them. Certainly Pharaoh and Haman and their troops were in the wrong. The wife of Pharaoh said, A source of delight for me and for you. Do not kill him. It may well be that he will be of use to us, so perhaps we could adopt him as a son. They were not aware. Thus, following the decree predetermined by God, Pharaoh and his family rescued the prophet Musa from the river and adopted him. The prophet Musa began to be raised like a noble Egyptian in Pharaoh's palace. The prophet Musa grew up in Pharaoh's palace. He came of age, and God gave him knowledge and wisdom. The event which marked a turning point in his life was a fight in which he was involved. In this fight, the prophet Musa took the side of the man who was from his party, without looking into who was in the right. Though he did not intend to kill him, the other man died from the blow. The Prophet Musa realized he had erred and repented, seeking refuge in God.